as always, brought to you by Off The Map Tattoo, this place right here. Uh, we are currently looking to hire uh, a, a diverse group of artists. Uh, we got a lot of dudes around here, so if you're not a dude and you're a good tattooer, come find us because uh, we need you. Uh, lastly, check out Adam France's book, Proto Science. Um, if you got to check out the show at Sacred, uh, he did a dual show with Guy Ickerson. We are about to bring that show here to Off The Map Studios. Uh, you'll be able to check that out in the next few days here in East Hampton. Catch up with us on the road. We'll be at the Paradise Tattoo Gathering uh, October 20th through the 23rd, um, as well as many events throughout the world in the coming year. Like I said, this episode is Paul Booth. Stay tuned, and we'll be back with Paul just after these commercials. See you in just a few minutes. Hey, Paul. Hey, man. What's going on? Uh, you know, just doing a little interview show. What's happening with you? <laughs> oh, I'm <laughs> doing a little interview show myself. Oh, right on. So what's new, man? Oh, uh, just hammering away, man. Just the same old stuff. I uh, always trying to get something done. <laughs> <laughs> uh, working on some new music, working on... Uh, just uh, brought in a few more clients to start another round of sessions with some new blood, and um, that was my day. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> so, uh, last time we saw each other in person was in Venice um, at the Venetian Tattoo Gathering. Can you tell me a little bit about your experience in Venice? Uh, well, I had the opportunity there, thanks to everybody in putting it on, um, to. Uh, draw with uh, Boris Vallejo and Julie Bell and uh, Stefano, um, which was an amazing experience for me. I, uh, Boris is somebody I've looked up to since I was a young one, so uh, being able to stand next to him and draw was uh, uh, pretty amazing for me. Yeah. We, did a, we did a stage performance of a collaborative art fusion sketch. Um, I'd show you a picture, but I don't have one handy. Uh, um, it's all right. I can put it into the edit. Okay. Um, I, uh, uh, what else? Did some fun tattooing and uh, tried to do a, um, what was that? A round table discussion we did. Yes. Um, that was like almost a disaster. <laughs> you know, I, uh, well, we, disaster after the editing room, but <laughs> yeah, yeah, we we've been going through that lately, and uh, it's not as bad as you might remember. <laughs> yeah, yeah, good, good. <laughs> it wasn't actually bad. It was just there were so many things I wanted to say, and what didn't have the opportunity. So it was uh, it was fun though. Well, so what do you feel like you didn't, you weren't able to get out there? I, I mean, I remember you, you, you're talking about um, the industry, how it changed and how it is now. Uh, what are some of the points you wanted to make? Oh, wow. Um, <laughs> I was probably on a rant. Uh, uh, 
I'm always complaining about something. I, um, uh, let's see, what were some of the points I wanted to make? Um, you know, I, I took about seven years off of traveling, from traveling, um, six years maybe, something like that, and barely did any shows really in that time. I, I wanted to focus on bigger projects here at home and whatnot. And uh, in that time, I, after that, I decided to start traveling again, which I guess was a few years ago. And uh, I, the industry had changed so dramatically in that time that I was gone that I barely recognized it or most of the people in it, really, other than the, the usual suspects. But um, everything seemed so different, you know. I... I um, uh, I didn't feel that sense of uh, family I used to feel, you know. I guess it's gotten so big and conventions became so big and so much new blood in the industry that um, something got lost, you know. Um, there's new things gained, of course. There's, like, amazing talent. That can't be denied. Um, um but it seems like a, a degree of uh, this competition thing has been bugging the shit out of me for a bit. And uh, it seems like everyone's so competitive now. And, and, and not everyone, don't get me wrong. I mean, like I said, I am an avid complainer. But uh, I've met lots of cool new kids in the scene, you know, so I don't want to take anything away from that. But I've also seen a lot of, I've seen kids crying when they lose contests. I mean, I've never seen that before. So for an old timer like me, it's like, wow, you know, it, it, it's it, the vibe is different, you know. Uh, some things better, some things worse, you know. What do you think? Um, what do you think caused the shift uh, for people to become more competitive and more, uh, you know, wanting to care about stupid ass tattoo competitions and stuff? What, what do you think caused that change? That particular part of it, I'm gonna blame on reality television for sure. Um, and the natural progression of, of uh, the evolution of the industry and, and growing so rapidly. You know, when something mainstreams, you get a lot of assholes that step in the door along with cool new people. So, unfortunately, with the growth, there's not just the growth of good talent, and there's a major growth of shitheads coming in, too. Absolutely. Um, I'm not afraid to say it, you know. And um, part of it is also that we've let outsiders control you know tattooing was always a fragmented industry for forever and uh that allowed the door open for outsiders i guess you could say to come in and literally practically run the industry now you know and uh it's a shame i'd rather support other tattooers than outsiders that are exploiting us any day of the week so i'm particular about the supply companies or the 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 uh, equipment that I use, I always, or even inks, you know, I always try and support the industry more so than who happens to be bleeding off it, sucking off it, you know. Yeah. Um, I mean, most recently, you know, there's been a big supply company that just got bought out by some capital investment firm, you know, and I see that happening more and more, and it seems like people are just trying to yeah. profit, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Well, tattooers notoriously. Even though it was more of a sense of brotherhood years ago, at the same time, tattooers notoriously have a hard time working together anyway. Um, so it's a kind of a funny, weird dichotomy, really. But in one sense, as a fellow tattooer, there's a brotherhood, you know. In the other sense, as business goes, it's every man for himself. <laughs> uh, now, it's, now it's just every man for himself. But... Uh, um, no, but, but, but I think, um, you know, back to this competitive thing, I think all of the, the, the media attention, you know, with reality shows and whatnot, and of course I probably won't mention anyone in particular, but um, not hard to guess who I'm thinking of yeah, <laughs> anyway. Yeah, I think yeah, any, anybody that's paying attention will know. Yeah, yeah. I think it's been bad for the industry, to be honest with you. I think 
it's not the artists. I have no issue or problem with any of the artists that have been on TV. I mean, I've been on myself here and there, and, and, and it's not the artists I have an issue with. It's the producers and the networks that are actually controlling all the scripted drama that's kind of portraying us sometimes to be like a bunch of idiots. And I don't consider myself an idiot, so... I don't really like being portrayed as one to the general public, you know. Absolutely. So not. on a personal, it's kind of like my personal thing with it, you know. But um, if, you know, if I had the opportunity for a TV show, it would be something that educated people as to other aspects of tattooing that are maybe a little more reality based, rather than for catching attention like a competition would, you know. Um, you know, they just take that competition top chef model and marry it tattooing and bang it out throwing as much scripted drama in as they can and uh and they got a hit show because that's what people a mass majority of them look for they want the drama they want the bullshit so of course the networks deliver it the tattooers just kind of go along with what they're told it's their chance to be on tv so okay i'll act like a jerk most of the jerks I've seen on TV are not really jerks in real life. I don't understand really why they let themselves come off like that. But, you know, whatever, each to their own. Um, but point being, um, I think there's been, to the general public I'm talking about, you know, the people that know nothing about tattooing and the only tattooing they know or understand about is what they've seen on television, you know. And uh, I don't know about you or anyone else out there, but whatever's on TV is definitely not me. <laughs> so, uh, you know, uh, I'm, I'm tired of the questions that I get now. And, and uh, even some of the clientele that walks in the shop now are people that are, are just don't have a clue like they used to. You know, it's like they were re-educating people. They've got the attention. They've been to tattooing now because the TV tells them to be. And uh, and then they think a back piece can be done in 23.5 minutes, you know, because they saw it on TV. And, and the fistful of dollars that we're always running around with and, the, you know, whatever, man. <laughs> you know, yeah. it's just I, I see something that breaks the stereotype that's being built currently. Yeah, you know? absolutely. Uh, it, it's not, I mean, real, reality TV isn't reality, you know. It's TV. It's its own thing. It just, it may, it's, it's, it's garbage. I think we're reaching a time where people are looking for something a little more intelligent now. And I think, you know, um, the antithesis of what's going on now in the media is coming. You know, I, I, I think people are getting tired of this, this bullshit droll that, you know, I, I think they're seeing that... It, Reality television in general is getting just a little too dumb, you know. I mean, when you got shows like uh, what's that little girl, the little fat kid, uh, Honey Boo Boo, Honey, Honey Boo Boo, yeah, <laughs> that was a hit show for a minute. I mean, really, <laughs> I oh, saw yeah. one episode and I make it through it, you know. <laughs> and they're making that tattoo shows like that shit, you know, and then just pumping them out, and it's like, oh, I just. I don't know, man. I, 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 I would like to see more respect to this craft going on, more respect paid to it. Do you know what I mean? I know that means less drama and more boring for the general public, but at the same time, um, why are they only showing one idiotic side of tattooing and, and, and not a bigger picture? You know? Yeah, exactly. And you know what? It doesn't necessarily have to be consumable by the general so, public. You know, it's, no. it's, it's not, it's not, well, not what the, the guys are doing, you know, I mean, at least, you know, that your viewership or people that are in the know to some degree or another, and you have an, I'd rather have a hundred interested people than a thousand retards, like watching because they're told to, you know, uh, yeah, unless it's pay-per-view. <laughs> <laughs> Tattoo artists are power creators, not power administrators. Save time, money, and trees with Tattoo Release Forms app. Your client will photo his ID, enter personal information, information about the tattoo, health information, 
initial legal clauses, and sign his name. When the client is finished, you can make session notes and choose inks and needles from the most popular brands and configurations. Preview the form, sign it, and hit upload. The form lands on a secure cloud in seconds as a printable PDF. If you're at a convention or without Wi-Fi, TRF will automatically upload the forms next time you're online. Return clients can simply search for themselves, check to make sure all the information is correct, and sign again. Done in seconds. Download Tattoo Release Forms app from the Apple App Store for free and enjoy 25 free forms. Also available in the UK, Canada, and Australia. So, um, <laughs> you've been working on new music outside of tattooing, right? How is that going for uh, you? Yeah. Um, it's always a battle for me. I, I, uh, I don't really consider myself much of a musician. I just put sounds together and try and make rhythms and melodies and stuff. And it's more for the uh, meditation for art than it is for actual music, you know. Yeah. The music kind of came to part of a bigger experiment initially and uh, I've always worked on um, like the seminar I do I've always talked about and worked on this uh, experiment I started maybe 15 years ago or something and uh, it was about creating a, uh, a very well it, developing a creatively inducive environment to see my full potential um, as an artist and uh, music plays a role in environment you know so it's like the music you listen to is uh, when you're creating to kind of find that zone you need music that helps you personally find a zone to get lost in and create art in you know? uh, so I started creating my own soundscapes to listen to while I tattooed and, and painted and um, and it just kind of turned into a sort of weird music from there, I guess. But uh, it gets a little better. Every album kind of gets a little bit better, but it's still nowhere near where I want to be. So I get pretty frustrated with it. I still do it because I really make the music for myself more so than, hey, I'm putting out an album, you know. Right. Is, I, it, I've is, never is that challenge great. exciting for you, though? I mean, like having that challenge and having, you know, because... Tattooing, you've, you've got a really great handle on tattooing. You've been doing it for a long time. Is it nice to have something you're not really great at uh, so that you can strive, you know, and kind of make progress? I don't think you're really great at anything, but I get your point. I, uh, um, uh, yeah, it is. It's nice to, you know. But honestly, I don't look at it like, uh, well, I got this figured out. Let's do that because that's harder or you know, if you feel like you got something figured out, then you're gonna not, you're just not gonna learn anymore. So, I'm still doing black and gray instead of color because I don't really feel like I've figured out black and gray yet. Um, and uh, so I get just as frustrated during a tattoo as I do during trying to make a song or halfway through a painting or whatever. It's it's more about the journey and how you push yourself than it is. Oh yeah, I can paint. You know, I'm just going to bang this out, you know. I don't know how to bang shit out, really. You know, so I, it's all relative to me. So the music is no different. Maybe it's a little more frustrating because, you know, um, I would say the difference between the two would be my lack of musical prowess makes me a bit more insecure with my music. Whereas in tattooing, I feel quite confident, even though I don't feel I'm the best I can be. You know, so uh, it's weird, you know. So I guess in that sense, yeah, it's refreshing and challenging because, you know, I spend a lot of time punching myself in the face while I'm playing my keyboard. You of know? course. No, I, so. I, mean, I understand that feeling completely, you know, and uh, I, I like that challenge. I like that frustration sometimes, you know, like the, yeah. trying to figure out Drives solutions. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you can throw things around the room all night long, but you're still progressing whether you, as painful as a road as it may be you are getting better you just in the moment it doesn't feel like it you know but the more you're driven to get better the better you're naturally going to become eventually in your own time so as long as you're not throwing the brushes away or 
stomping off with a temper tantrum and not coming back to it. Right. As long as you keep coming back to it to go through that emotional roller coaster once again that is creating art, you know, um, then you're just naturally going to progress and get better. It's just how much time you put in and devotion, dedication. So you said you don't feel like you've mastered black and gray yet. What do you do to improve or change or evolve? Um, well, I found much like um, tattooing and painting or all, any creative outlet, any discipline really, the time that you take away from it is as important as the time you take in it, you know. It's, it's, uh, it's almost like, no, I can't say that. <laughs> uh, it's almost like certain substances that alter your consciousness. The, the time you spend in this reality is as important as the time you spend in another. So um, that's what I mean, I suppose. Yeah. <laughs> um, and and uh, I'm not sure how that relates to my point, but uh, <laughs> there was one in there. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, let's talk a little bit about what you've been doing travel-wise. I know that you know you went to Venice. Uh, where did you head after Italy? Um, where the hell did I go after Italy? Man, uh, Costa Rica, Toronto, um, Ireland. Uh, Shit. How was your I think own? I might have went back out to California. What were you doing in Ireland? Yeah. Uh, convention in Dublin. How yeah. was it? Um, I had fun. It's been like 15, 14 years since I've been in Ireland. and uh, It's been quite a while. It was nice to get back. Uh, kind of a conservative country for me. Very Catholic, obviously. But, um, yes. Nobody, not the kind of Catholic that I'm used to growing up, you know. This is more of a not in your face, not telling you how to live, you know, that sort of thing. Just conservative, you know. Right. Uh, are, are you going to be going back next year? Oh, I'm not sure. Um, uh, I, I, I'm trying to still figure out next year as to how much traveling I want to do. I'm trying to keep a balance where, you know, Maybe for every month that I'm home, I'm gone for a few weeks. I'm not really necessarily half and half. I should spend a little more time at home, but maybe 40% of the year I travel, you know, something like that. So figuring out where I'm going, I have to kind of map it all out and space it all out. And too much of one is not healthy for me. So too much traveling or too much staying home, either way, it's, it's showing, proving itself to not be healthy. So finding that balance between the two has, has been working out pretty well the last couple of years. You've got a pretty solid crew at home right now, right? Yeah, this place can run itself. It's nice. I'm allowed to travel. for. Um, <laughs> you know, I get to go away and, you know, I still make the big decisions on my cell phone all day wherever I am in the world. But, uh, um, but for the most part, the day-to-day -day stuff handles itself and you know, I'm only bothered when I need to be bothered, so it's not like uh, someone's calling me while I'm in uh, uh, Europe uh, asking me where the towels are, you know? Right. So <laughs> I don't have to deal with any of that. <laughs> my name is BJ Betts. Thank everybody for coming. I really appreciate it. Um, my love for lettering has been like way before I even started tattooing. I'll try and like keep it a little simple as far as like um, terminology for, for fonts and lettering. Because I'm going to cover everything that I can, I guess, cover. And um, uh, yeah, uh, I guess I'll, I'll take it from here. I'll give it to you. So I approach things in a pretty simple manner. Um, when I'm laying out lettering, this is what I do. I start with a real loose sketch and just go on from there. from a joke.
I like to make everything flow together as much as possible. So um, let's say I have, I don't know, maybe a T and an H, for example. There's a few things that we can do. You know, obviously we can just make it like that. Yeah, it's cool, kind of boring, but I mean, you know what it is still. Maybe bring that H, if it's the end of the word, maybe. You can, you know, bring that H down, loop it around. And then maybe you can bring that H back over, and now you got that. Yeah, I think that works a lot better than this. It looks cool. You can still play around with it a little bit, clean everything up. Boom, now everybody's happier, and you get to do something cooler. At whatever stage you may be in your tattoo career, apprentice, experienced street shop tattooer, or fully custom artist, it's hard not to feel a little competitive in today's tattoo industry with so many amazing artists working in all styles in virtually every corner of the world. But you can benefit right now by learning from the experience of the tattoo professionals who have dedicated themselves to education in this industry. I'm Guy Aitchison, and I've been teaching in the tattoo field for much of my 27 years in the trade, with most of my educational efforts being focused within my Reinventing the Tattoo platform, which has been an industry standard in education for nearly two decades. Reinventing was originally conceived as a series of seminars that I held at tattoo conventions, and its curriculum has been filled out and fine-tuned according to the needs of the artists attending these classes. It's now a massive standalone educational package which can be viewed on any kind of device in order to bring the answers you need right to your fingertips. The Reinventing the Tattoo curriculum is centered around a group of fundamental artistic principles of composition, including flow and fit on the body, contrast, positive-negative relationships, color theory, depth, and other concepts, which are framed in a way that is meant to be as useful as possible to working tattoo artists. The material then covers uses of reference imagery and digital tools in your design process, along with a review of alternate art forms such as oils and watercolors and how they can help refine your skills as a tattoo artist. The technical sections are as comprehensive as possible, covering everything from machines and other basic equipment to stenciling and working on various challenging parts of the body. Not only am I sharing everything useful that I know about these subjects, but I'm also enlisting the help of various top-name professionals such as Russ Abbott, Nick Baxter, Megan Jean Morris, Phil Garcia, Halo Jankowski, and Don McDonald to share their own experience on these topics. You may have already read the book version of Reinventing the Tattoo. However, the new electronic edition has been seriously updated and expanded beyond the scope of the old book, including not only new chapters by myself and our guest writers, but also introducing a massive section on cover-up tattooing, including chapters on lasers and scar cover-ups, plus loads of new video footage to further illustrate the book's topics. Subscribers can look forward to seeing new material added regularly along with further updates to existing content as the Reinventing curriculum continues to expand and evolve. I'd like to invite you to drop by ReinventingTheTattoo.com to read more about what we have to offer in the Reinventing the Tattoo educational package. It's the biggest and most detailed teaching effort I've ever been involved with, and I'm completely confident that no matter where you stand in your tattoo career, it can help you to take your work to the next level. So we were talking about your crew, but um, let's talk a little bit about philanthropy, um, a little about giving back. Um, have you been involved in benefits or charities or anything like that? Uh, well, I have uh, the Arfusion experiment, and uh, we're trying to make it a nonprofit right now, but uh, that's been around since 2000, and uh, that's all that collaborative art stuff. and. What we did was uh, everything that we do, all of the art that is uh, produced under the flag um, is basically given, to ch all of it's given to charity. Um, ICAF, uh, International Child Art Foundation, is our uh, current charity that we deal with. And, uh, you know, it supports art with children. Um, we actually want to develop our own charity that uh, uh, once I have the manpower to run this thing properly, our fusion um, we want to develop our own charity that like directly physically puts art supplies in the school system and underprivileged kids and that sort of thing because that's really ultimately what we want to do um, but if our fusion is happening somewhere else in the world and, and, and uh, they have a chosen charity we support whatever charity that 
the museum or the tattoo convention or gallery that we're working with uh, chooses to work with. So, but as so, charities go. So. Yeah, what, what made you want to uh, give to uh, like charities and give art supplies to kids and stuff like that? What, what drove you to well, do that? I know it's unlikely for a creepy guy like me to give a shit, uh, and I generally don't. Um, <laughs> but um, I've always had a problem with authority, you know. And uh, whether the, whatever the authority is, whether it's uh, the government or otherwise, um, they're the ones that are deciding what gets cut out of schools the educational system and it seems to be that art went first music is right behind it and um, you know there's no this country in America there is no attention virtually no attention paid to the arts in the school system and uh, whether it's privileged or underprivileged kids it doesn't seem to make much of a difference it's just not really properly paid attention to you know, I found out, for example, one of the reasons there's so much amazing art coming out of Russia, for example, uh, I could be wrong, but this is what Russian friends have told me, is that they basically get their art education for free. So it's like half these tattooers that are blowing us away coming out of Russia had like extreme schooling that we just don't get, you know, unless you have tons of money to do it. Right. Um, and when you're in a country that pays attention to the arts and develops programs for it for these kids, I think uh, that's great, you know, um, and as it should be. And uh, if I can support that, I certainly will, you know. I have a 28-year-old daughter who, when she was a kid, it was the same thing, but with my traveling, it was hard to, you know, she's creative and very artistic, but formal training she didn't get enough of, you know. Um, and uh, art being something that, well, it's basically all I know. Um, I find it very important, and I don't think it should be neglected in, in the educational system. So that's why I support it. I mean, there's all kinds of charity. I don't give to charities for the sake of charity, you know. I'm not a very charitable person in reality, but but uh, if I believe in something, I'll support it, you know. Absolutely. Is is your daughter involved in tattooing? She tattooed me once. I tattooed her once. Um, she talks about it, but she's on a different path. Really, her thing is music. Yeah. Uh, she sings, and she's got an incredible voice, and uh, she's working on a single right now. I'm excited to uh, see it launch, or drop, as the kids are saying these days. <laughs> uh, <laughs> her album drops on uh, October or whatever, you know. Um, uh, no, she's working hard with that, and interior design as well, which I really appreciate because I come from that as uh, myself so I'm glad she's pursuing creative careers yeah. you recently launched uh, a collection of home decor stuff speaking of interior design um, oh. I've seen the wall sconces and stuff um, how's that uh, what 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 drew you to well, make that kind of stuff um, I love to sculpt and, and basically Whatever discipline I take on, I need to have an outlet for it as part of the uh, whole concept of expression. Uh, so I need to sculpt for a reason, you know. Uh, I like the whole process of sculpting and mold making and casting and, you know, so I, uh, uh, it's more about the sculpting business aspect of it, but... With the whole uh, I actually uh, uh, it's a little bit on hold at the moment because uh, it's working with uh, failed miserably oh, and left pretty bad and burned me for about 12 grand actually. motherfucker and uh, yeah uh, really fucked me up and uh, but you know what goes around comes around as they say uh, but it's not finished and paid back. 
uh, we'll restart things. <laughs> so I have a few other sculptures on hand. Um, that, um, here's what was going to be up next. This is uh, this is a uh, a corner accent. I'm calling it. Oh yeah. And it basically goes on a picture frame. It's cool. It's creepy. Um, creepy as fuck. It's uh, and the back of it, as you can see, it has like a um, uh, an edge, a lip, so that you can kind of just hook it on a door frame or a window or a mirror or whatever. That's anything. Cool. Yeah. So you know, stuff like that. I just I I like to play with ideas beyond just the the aesthetic. I like efficiency. I like. Uh, I like things to have purpose and use. So I decided home decor is perfect because I can make things that pay attention to details that most decor companies don't, <laughs> you know? So it's like accents and, and, and things that you just normally wouldn't see, but a dark version of them, something cool, you know, that uh, for people like me that appreciate and do most of their shopping around October <laughs> for the year. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I completely appreciate that aesthetic for sure. Um, so we're going to come down and visit you in early October, so not too far yeah. from now. Um, do you want to tell everyone what we're up to? Do you know what we're up to? We're going to sneak attack you? <laughs> <laughs> so we're joined forces um, to uh, bring a, uh, a seminar day to New York and the surrounding area. And... Uh, Basically, uh, this is something uh, off the map's been doing, and I'm finally getting my shit together to do it uh, here in New York uh, with uh, Last Rite Seminary, which seemed like an appropriate name for a, a seminary seminar program. But <laughs> see my wit, isn't that yeah, something? That's right. Uh, <laughs> I, uh, um, so we come together to kind of kick this off and. Uh, um, for me, it's really exciting because one thing I think New York needs is uh, a way to get together on an artistic level and what better way than seminars, you know, to bring serious artists together in one place and build a sense of camaraderie but also uh, uh, educate the East Coast area a bit more, you know. Uh, so we can keep up with the West Coast if for no other reason. <laughs> so, um, you think we need to keep up with the West Coast, man? I don't. I don't know. Uh, talent. There is talent here as well, but I mean, I don't see artists coming together in New York like I do in L.A. Sure. You know what I mean? I'm not seeing guys like hanging out together and as much. And um, not to make comparisons, I don't really care. But, um, but. You know, anyone who knows me knows I'm always about this uh, naive ideal that uh, there can be a sense of brotherhood in tattooing, you know? Um, I consider tattooing to be something really special. I mean, it's changed my life. It's shaped my life. Um, I, we all have some regrets in our life, but tattooing is certainly not one of mine. Uh, it's been very good to me. I like to give back, and uh, I think that uh, it's a good way to do that, you know, and and I'd like to see uh, more of that going on. So it's really just doing my part to do things in a way that uh, is and would be uh, beneficial to the industry. And in turn, New York, you know, it's my hometown. So, well, I'm a New Jersey boy originally, but... Um, I won't tell anybody. I've been in New York for, like, since 98, I've been in New York. So I don't know if I'm a New Yorker yet, officially or not. But I guess you'd have to ask a New Yorker. And they'd probably... Like, yeah, oh, well... No. no, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, it's I got Anyone who's here less than you is not a New Yorker. Right. So... Uh, I got a question from the chat room. Um, it's from Joe King. He says uh, that you've been more outspoken in recent years, and you've kind of touched on this earlier. 
Um, has this become, has this because you've had more time or is it because you're trying to pass on information to a younger generation of tattooers? Uh, I'm definitely trying to pass on information. Uh, the funny thing is I came out of, you know, I would mentioned earlier I stayed home for like six or seven years and stopped traveling for the most part. And then when I came back out and saw the changes, part of me, this is probably going to sound a little fucked up because it's going to sound like who the hell do I think I am or whatever, but whatever. Um, I'm one of the guys that came before that was one of the tattoo quote unquote rock stars, you know, I mean, I, I did my part to help glorify tattooing and bring it to the mainstream. Um, certainly not single handedly, but I mean, we put on tattoo the earth and brought music and tattooing together, which is commonplace now. And, and uh, things like that, you know, we, we, we did some, made some pioneer efforts and, um, in one respect, they paid off. It got tattooing more attention and, or helped to get more attention and helped to get it more respect and so on. But then I ended up having to stay home um, for these years and uh, wasn't able to really follow it up and continue. So, you know, uh, things kind of got scrambled, I think. And... Uh, I come back feeling this sense of obligation, like, hey, I know I played a role in this change, the negative change that I see, so what can I do to try and fix it and clear my conscience, you know? Uh, I think there's plenty of other old timers that should be feeling the same way. I'm not alone on this, but there's two things that happen in the industry as far as I'm concerned. Uh, there's kids coming in that are just bricks that don't belong here, good sure. art or not. And there's a, also a great degree of kids coming in that just aren't educated. It's not that they're assholes at all. They just don't know. And you can't blame them for that. All you can blame for that is when this big shift happened, um, about the same time that I, I had to stay home for a while, a lot of other old-timers decided to stay home or got pushed out, one or the other and stopped passing along information to the kids. So now we have a bunch of orphans running around, good artists or not, but regardless, it's like a bunch of orphans running around uh, lost and not knowing much. Like, you know, there's some of them that don't care about the history and there's others that just don't have any way of knowing the history because there's nobody around anymore. Right. So I don't really want to be one of those guys that just bails and bitches about it. You know, I have a right to bitch about it because I'm out on the front line seeing it for myself. Absolutely. I'm not sitting home saying, oh, you kids suck, you know. No, some of you are great and some of you, yeah, some of you suck, you know. And that's just, you know, how it is. <laughs> yeah, I, no, man, I, I commend you for actually saying something. Uh, you know, I mean, I see a good mix of veteran tattooers, uh, you know, that some just say yeah. fuck it and they write yeah, off, they, you know they're writing it off and then some are actually out there trying to make a change but there's definitely a good handful that are just yeah. like fuck it man i'm just going to stay home and fuck everybody else and you know yeah. i i appreciate when people come out and actually want to share their information yeah i mean it's such a combination of things you know um sharing information is vital especially now uh with social media in place and the way it's redefining things uh or already has, um, you know, I'm always complaining about what a real tattoo looks like versus what Instagram tells you, you know, and, um, I get frustrated when I have to show fresh work because I want them to see it healed right. because that's what separates them right. and the boys is how does it look a year from now or six months from now or whatever, you know, how does it look then? Um, it seems like we're in this like instant gratification world of uh, uh, all that really matters is the photo in the portfolio at the end of the tattoo, not how it's going to look in ten years. You know, and the way I was brought, you know, I, I, don't, um, I don't, I don't even think it's it's the portfolio anymore. I think it's it's the like three seconds of scroll by. You know, it's not even. It's like, all right, how yeah. is it going to look in a two by two inch square? You know. Yeah. 
Uh, yeah, I mean, they're, they, you know, they're, they're, there's just no nobody. I mean, they're even making ink now that disappears in a year. I know how bullshit is that. Uh, but it's just a, a continuation of the original problem, you know. So now they're making disposal, you know, um, temporary ink. So go through the pain and know that it's going to come out in a year, and you can go through the pain again in a year and do something else. And well, that's great, but tattooing ain't about that. No, and it never will be for me. But yet, that's going to become popular. Why? Because it's going to become popular amongst the idiots that have stepped yeah. in from the mainstreaming of the industry. You know, and they'll make it popular. They'll think it's rad. They'll think it's like a new trend, temporary permanence. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so. man, it's, it's, uh, that that whole concept is com utter bullshit to me. You know, it, I, yeah, I can't yeah. believe that someone actually went out and invented that fucking crap. So if you have, yeah, I mean, it, it, no, go ahead. Oh no, I'm just rambling. <laughs> what were you gonna say? Sir? No, I was gonna say. <laughs> If you have like one piece of advice for someone who is coming into the tattoo industry and might not know what the hell is up, what what would you what kind of advice could you give them? Whenever I'm asked this question, I always say the same first two words: run away. <laughs> <laughs> now that I've said that, <laughs> um, I um, I uh. It's all too easy now to just teach yourself how to tattoo. Inks go in better, machines go in, you work easy, better. Uh, well, I guess that would be debatable, but um, it's easier to tattoo now than it used to be. Uh, the, the communication and the, the, the message of, of how to do it is easier to obtain now, and that's fine, that's inevitable. Um, but the ethics are not being uh, carried over. You know, the technical side, to a degree, is being taught or being passed on, depending on who you talk to. Uh, and the art, of course, is coming out of art school or whatever and going right into tattooing. Um, if you're an artist, why not? You know, it should be there for everybody who wants to do it. It's just that the ethics should be there, too. And... If you're not ethical, to me, you're just never going to be a tattooer. I just saw, you know, it's funny. I'm going to sound like a hypocrite because I just did a face tattoo last year. But I just saw a face tattoo of a guy that literally, I only saw one or two little tattoos on his arms. And his entire half of his face was done. Uh, is and, that, is uh, that the skull? Like half yeah, face skull. skull tattoo? Uh, yeah, I saw that. No, it's, it's not for me to judge. I'm not judging the guy by no means. It's not what I do. No. Um, I got one on my face too, sort of. And um, uh, it's the tattooer that concerns me. I don't know who did it, and I don't want to talk shit. But did he really know that guy well enough to know what he's being a part of? And right. it's not for me to say the guy's going to regret it or not. And it's not even about that, because who's to say what you're going to regret or not? You know, who's to tell you that? Um, I don't have any regrets with mine, um, and I'm not going to say he will. Um, the fact, I think what I'm driving at is, I hope he knew the guy fairly well, decently well, before he committed to helping him achieve this, just because ethics dictate that, like for me, you know, you got to understand, I come from a place where hands and heads and necks were all taboo for a long time. They're not anymore. And that's good and bad because seeing like a 19-year-old kid or an 18-year-old kid, I don't know this guy's age. I'm just using it as an example. So this is not a personal attack on anybody, but it's the most recent thing that I've seen that has me concerned about the ethical responsibility of the tattooer not being taught anymore you know you can just not give a fuck and just do whatever on anybody take their money and just focus on your art that's fine but like if you really don't care about the possibility that you're playing a major role in what could fuck up someone's life very easily uh that's very irresponsible to me uh so like when i did that kid's face last year i drilled him and you know 
I, I, he had been contacting me for a while before, and it was because of his uh, his reasons that I dis agreed to do it. Uh, because I said no quite a few times to him, and he wouldn't take no for an answer. But that's not why I did it. That was just why I li decided to listen to him and hear him out. And he convinced me, you know. And I'm not easy to convince. I'm not going to do faces every day because it's a cool idea. Do you know how much I would love to turn someone's face into a sick demon? Do you have any idea? <laughs> but I ethically, you know, I would have to know them quite well before I took part in that, played that role. Yeah. Yeah, I, you know, I think so, a lot of people are just looking for shock value or, you know, notoriety and, and maybe don't often take it into account. I mean, I like, I like I said, like you said, you don't know that artist, I don't know that artist either. I'm not talking specifically about him, right. but, you know. Right. Um, yeah, well, you know, it, 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 like I said, you know, unless you're under an apprenticeship with a reputable ethical tattooer, you're not going to learn these things. So it's not a matter of whether, oh, he don't give a shit. Maybe he just doesn't know any better, you know, although you have to know as a tattooer what you're doing to somebody, you know, and, <laughs> you know, and it's one thing tattooing your face. It's another thing tattooing it to something so aggressive, you know, that, um, um, you know, I would almost make the guy walk around with body painting for a week to see how it is. Yeah, I mean, you know what I, I, mean? I mean, that's not uh, a tattoo you can back up from easily, you know. Um, no, it's a commitment. It's, it's that's like the ultimate commitment, which I respect thoroughly, you know. But um, this is what happens when you get older, you know, because you've made your mistakes and you've learned from them, and now you're preaching to the young kids, you know. That's what we do when we turn my age, you know. And <laughs> I. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I see that now. I certainly didn't see it then. To me, it was, then it was like, shut up, old man, you know. Um, uh, you know, I, it, but, hopefully someone's listening because, yeah, I mean, out of the 20,000 people that are watching right now, I'm sure someone is getting the message. Um, 20,000. Hi, Ma. Yeah. Oh, yeah, 20,000. Mm -hmm. Cool, cool. <laughs> people want to hear what you have to say. Um, I'd like to thank the account. <laughs> Oh, right on, man. Well, hey, we've reached our 9 o'clock mark, so um, okay. I got to go. But I will see you in October, right. um, and we'll be streaming from down Looking at Last Rights. Right? Right on. Looking forward to it, man. Thanks for having me, guys. It's always great talking with you, man. I'll talk to you soon. Thanks for watching. That was Paul Booth. Make sure you go to YouTube to check out the replay and all the other stuff we got going on next week. We were talking with Don Cook and Marcus Leonard, I believe, um, right here, Monday, 8 o'clock. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time, and Josh will be back with some network news. He's in Pittsburgh right now. Uh, and if you get bored, go check out my website, benlocata.com. I'll uh, talk to you uh, next week. See ya.